My name is Bob Cogshall, and uh, I have uh, been doing Unix for a long time. I think that that's uh, what we want to talk about here. Yep. Uh, so uh, you wanted to know about uh, uh, old so Unix command. So my understanding is, is you've got a background with some very important pieces of Unix, or a very important piece of Unix that all of us. Well, something that somebody today. types. Uh, a lot of people type every day. Right. Uh, so so uh, there was a command. And I should I mention now or later? No, no, you can you can mention ah. it now. Okay. Well, it, it was called it's called sudo, s u d o, and so the origin of the command uh, was that uh, in about 1981, I was a, a freshly graduated uh, student from the State University in New York at Buffalo, and the computer science department uh, hired me to be a computer technician. Uh huh. And and back then there was no such thing as network administrator or systems administrator and the programming part was very vague about what you would do as a, as a computer technician. It was mostly about soldering uh, RS-232 lines and, and, and running them in the ceiling over to the computer science professors dumb terminals in our offices mm -hmm. and hooking them up to the, the main machine and the computer science department got their brand new machine they were very proud of. It was a, a, a DEC VAX 11750 and this was a huge amount of money for the uh, computer science department to spend and it was like the crown jewel and I kept it in an air-conditioned room and uh, they all we, I, my job was to hook up the terminals to it and learn about how to use it as fast as I could and I had touched a little bit of, of uh, Unix machines before like version 6 and version 7 PDP 11s but they were nothing like the Berkeley Unix where that had job control where you could type control Z and background a process in the seashell that was unheard of and it had this new editor called VI so I had all these computer science professors uh, uh, wanting to use it and doing all sorts of things with it. And the first thing they wanted was the root password. And uh, so we had this, we had 20 people that wanted the root password. And we were thinking, this is probably a bad idea. So uh, I pondered on the problem with a while. And I was learning uh, as much as I could about the machine as I, as I could. But um, I, they hired me because I would just one of these people who just wanted to access I just did this stuff whether I was getting paid or not and I had another friend who just loved to do stuff who was getting paid or not and he had heard that the computer science department had gotten a VAX 11750 and it was the coolest thing on earth and and he said Bob can you can you let me in to, to get at the VAX uh, and I said okay okay fine and I let him in and uh, 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 he I a little bit of time went on and he was like he, he learned very quickly he was learning software development much faster than, than me and the he was writing in fourth and things like that and uh, he then he was learning C and so he started delving in and started writing programs for it and he uh, said Bob Bob um, I, I need to give me something to do uh, you know and, and I so I had this problem of the root password and so uh, I thought well Okay, Cliff, we need a program. We need a little program, little command line, that gives people root permission on a per-command basis. And, uh, and I think you're, you're, gonna, you're, need, you're need to gonna write a C program and you're gonna have to do a set UID root. And uh, that's all I know about it. I saw it in the man page. And uh, so a couple of weeks went by and he uh, wrote the uh, program and uh, he uh, showed it to me. He said, oh, it's really cool, and it really and it really works. Hey, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. And uh, there was actually a few. It went through a few different versions. We had one that put out snotty messages, and we had stuff that uh, logged stuff, and and some 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 stuff was removed, and some stuff was added, and then um, uh, eventually uh, it came time to name it, and uh, and uh, I thought about what it should be named, and I was, and then the the, the, the command it replaced was su. And so, and the whole philosophy of Unix is to keep the command lines, you know, three, two characters, good, three characters, okay, four characters, bad. It was all about terseness. So I thought, okay, S-U-D, you know, I just, I typed it, I just typed it and thought, okay, sudo, it's do a super user thing. That's what it, that's what it meant on the man page. That's what was the, uh, the, the title of it. So um, that's how it, that's. How it happened. So that's I was. The that's the origin. Wow. So 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 so. Do you ever have the pet peeve that somebody calls it pseudo? No. No. It, not at all. Okay. Because because uh, we uh, that's just <clears throat> I just uh, pronounce it pseudo, 
And uh, there, I think if you go to the man page, somebody just said it's uh, the proper command, the proper terminology is sudo, but it's like vi and uh, um, uh, what this is, uh, vi. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, fine, just call it whatever you want. <laughs> and and be and so there's there's these pockets of cultural pockets will right, will right. call will say uh, su, sudo yeah. uh, and there's and there's people call it sudo. Yeah, sure. So sure. well, now the legacy of that is obviously you know I mean that's carried forward now for what thirty years, forty years, right? I mean, yeah, it's crazy. It's a long time. Who'd have right? thunk? And it's Who'd have thunk, right? yeah, and and it's gone through so many so many hands because I just took it from. Uh, uh, University of Buffalo. Uh -huh. uh, I moved and started working for the, the computer science department at uh, the Colorado CU Boulder, uh -huh. and they. Uh, I just brought it with me, and, and I just changed, started working for them and doing the same thing. And I said, "Oh, I got this command," oh, and uh, and it was uh, uh, just uh, taken into uh, stewardship by other people. And they added uh, stupid things and uh, good things. Uh, there was a timeout given added to it. Uh, there was uh, and, and there was this awful uh, config file. If you've ever had to go went to this, uh, into the Sudo's config file, somebody got the bright idea. They had looked at uh, Bacchus Nauer form, which is something only people who study computer science uh, would know about. And uh, they kind of took this twisted version of it and thought this would be a good idea, and it really has never persisted. Sure. Uh, that 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 you don't see a lot of BNF uh, in yeah, config yeah. files, yeah. and uh, so you, and everybody just goes in and just adds themselves root equals root equals root. That's <laughs> that's all I ever do. So uh, so it's gone through the through the years, and then it, it got posted to Usenet somewhere in the 80 late. Uh, now we're up to the uh, 90s. And that's how it propagated out to a lot of other people. And somebody put it, pushed it into so this BS. Is open source before open source. Oh yes, yes. Thing, where right. you just posted before it a, before it's a, a paradigm. Yes, I think the first, uh, yeah, the first, uh, it, it, uh, it, at least the act of propagating it occurred somewhere in the um, uh, late '80s, early '90s, uh, where someone and the act of open sourcing was to post it to Usenet. And uh, so they posted to Usenet, and and other people took it. And uh, people who had Berkeley Unix machines, BSD, were running BSD, uh, they it would just compile and run. And then uh, other people, it got into other distributions. It would make it into a, an OS distribution. And then uh, that's how it propagated. And then later on, of course, uh, uh, Linux came into vogue, and it got it it got put into Linux.